Good evening, I'm Belva Davis and welcome to This Week in Northern California. The U.S. Senate race in California is one of the most competitive in the nation. Businesswoman Carly Fiorina has mounted a vigorous campaign and pulled ahead of three-term Senator Barbara Boxer in at least one poll this week. Money is a big factor in that race, and jobs and the economy are big problems facing Democrats. I talked with Senator Barbara Boxer earlier about those and other issues affecting the upcoming election. Senator, do we finally have a jobs bill after many tries? Uh, and there's uh, that $26 billion there, and over $2 billion for California. Yes. Uh, yeah, but this is a very needy state. Uh, while it's a lot of money, can it, will it make a difference here in your home state? Well, let me tell you what it's going to do. It's going to keep 16,500 teachers on the job. And to me, as someone who went to public schools, I sent my kids to public schools, 95% of all American children go to public schools. We needed to save these jobs. These are hundreds of thousands of jobs nationwide. So specifically, yes, uh, the money is targeted for the teachers. And then there was another, uh, uh, some other dollars we sent to California to help with the health care, uh, to fill in a hole there, which will free up some other money to save police officer jobs, firefighter jobs, nurses, and nurses jobs. So I think specifically it did make a difference. But as far as the rest of the state budget, I mean, they're going to have to meet in the middle, the Democrats, the Republicans, and the governor, and figure this out. What a nightmare. Do your colleagues give you a hard time about California not managing itself well? Do you have difficulty getting money for California? Well, no. A lot of states are in this trouble, Belva. a lot of them, and uh, many. So they all understand what's happening. Because of this recession, revenues are down. Uh, some states have done better than others. But the ones that did the best in the, uh, you know, in the prosperity are getting hit the hardest. So really, no. I can't say people are giving uh, me a hard time or Senator Feinstein a hard time. We're all working together to try and make this better because we know we're going to get to better times. But this is a very deep, tough recession, and everybody's feeling it. You're saying we're all working together. We don't get the yeah. feeling back here yeah. that there's a lot of working together yeah. uh, overall in the Senate today. Well, a lot of colleagues do work together. I mean, I have to tell you, as tough as it is back there, and we've seen more filibusters from the Republicans in two years than there were in all the years of our country, imagine. So it is tough. Uh, still in all, I want you to know, uh, you have to reach across the aisle in order to get anything done. And we don't find many takers, but in this bill that you referred to that saved the teachers, mm -hmm. we did get the two main senators, uh, Senators uh, Collins and Snow, uh, two Republicans. So yeah, you have to work across the aisle mm -hmm. or you'll never get anything done. Because under Senate rules, one senator could stop everything. Uh -huh. Did Democrats have to cut programs that they normally would have supported in order to get this bill? It's a good question. We did make this bill deficit neutral. But what we were able to do is we, we cut tax breaks for companies who ship jobs overseas. That was part of the way we got the revenue. And we did look at some other programs that had um, anticipated inflation at a rate higher than it was coming in, such as the food stamp program, and because it wasn't coming in at a higher price, we were able to save some funds. So yes, we did have to scout around uh, and find a way to do it that was deficit neutral because we do have a terrible deficit. You know, I remember, Belva, when uh, I got elected to the United States Senate with Senator Feinstein in 1992. Mm -hmm. Bill Clinton, president then, had a huge deficit. We turned it into surpluses. We actually had a surplus, and we were able to do what we had to do without worrying. But then when George Bush came in and he gave tax breaks to the people at the very top, the millionaires, put it on the credit card, put two wars on the credit card, everything went south. And now we're in a situation where when President Obama and the Democrats took over, they inherited we a $1.3 trillion deficit. So we have to be cautious when we do things and use PAYGO, which is pay as you go. 
There was some disappointment in some quarters over the last money for the military for the two wars that, that are going on right mm -hmm. now that uh, some Democrats uh, spoke in favor of because of the troop situation. What can be done really more by even the party in charge having the, the a president of the same party in office when this has been a continuing problem, the whole business of wartime expenditures? Well, President Obama is pledged to end the Iraq war, and he's begun the reduction of troops, pretty massive reduction, from 144,000 to about, I believe it's about 50,000. And it will continue. In Afghanistan, he says next year he's going to start to bring the troops home. I went on a bill with Russ Feingold that will say to the president, please be more specific. What conditions have to be met? How fast can you bring them home? I would say that uh, the president uh, really wants to bring these troops home because it is a drain, uh, of course, uh, on our families to, to, to suffer the loss of our magnificent uh, fighting men and women, and uh, it's a drain on our Treasury. So we, uh, I believe he wants to make it happen. And, and the last point I'll make is I believe in nation helping, not nation building. And we have to be careful we don't get into nation building. We just can't do it. Okay, in the last few seconds. Yeah, I'm sorry. Few seconds, last few seconds. What's the primary difference between you and your opponent? What's the oh, number one difference? Oh, do you have difference? all day? Oh, no, only 30 she seconds. She wants to go back to the Bush <laughs> economy. She's uh, anti-choice. She's pro-drilling off the coast. A couple of ideas there. A couple of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that was recorded, and we will hear part two of that conversation with Senator Barbara Boxer on our program next week.